Well, hello. We've been waiting for you. Please sign. Please enter and have a seat. Sit up straight. No slouching in this classroom. Is that gum in your mouth? Sorry, my mistake. Professor Sparks had meant for me to fly, he'd have given me wings. But what could I do? This mission is too important. Now where could it be? <coughs> you startled me. I didn't think anyone would be here. Hey, you've got that, uh, the, the, um, transquizzer. Uh, now be careful with that thing. Don't drop it. The future of the world may depend on that little machine in your hands. That is, if I'm not too late. There's just so little time and so much to do. But wait. Nah. Well, it's worth a try. Listen, I need your help. And if you think you can handle it, you can help me save the world. I am Android XL2. But you can call me Botley. That's what Professor Spark calls me. His daughter Polly calls me... Well, never mind what Polly calls me. The professor created me as a prototype companion device. You see, he was having such trouble finding sitters for Polly because she scares them all away. So he invented me. I'm also programmed to be her friend. And believe me, it's tougher than it sounds. I'm not getting to the point, am I? Um, here, let me start from the beginning. <laughs> This morning, Polly's father, he left for another one of his famous inventor's conventions, and he programmed me to keep an eye on Polly. I'm supposed to keep her out of trouble. With Polly, that's always tough. But today, it was impossible. After coming home from school and madder than I've ever seen her, Polly locked herself in her father's secret chamber. Now, I really shouldn't tell you this because I've been programmed for secrecy, but this being a world emergency and all, well... The professor has an honest-to-goodness time machine up there, and it really works. Not only that, but Polly sent 25 of the other androids back in time. The whole world is changing, and the changes of Polly written all over them. Cars don't exist anymore, and now everyone has to travel by pogo stick. An orangutan has just been elected president of the United States in a landslide. And the Statue of Liberty is now the Statue of Licorice. It's all happening so quickly. But with your help, I think we can rescue all the androids and maybe stop the world from getting too weird. Just hand me the Transquizzer. I think it's got all the information we need to get started. Cool. Now hang on tight and come with me. Sorry about the landing. I wasn't programmed to fly. Well, this is it. Home sweet home. Polly should be inside.
Um, as I was saying, this is the Professor's Mountain. Polly should be inside, and I just bet she's watching us now. Oh, <laughs> that was funny, watching that poor dumb robot flying back in time. I couldn't ask for a better way to spend the afternoon. <laughs> In another day, the world will see the dawning of Polly's planet. Whoops! It seems there's someone at the door. Let's take a little peek. Oh, it's only Botley. He knows I don't like to be disturbed when I'm working. It breaks my concentration. Okay, let's see what he wants. This might be fun. Oh, Snotly, you're back. I've been looking for you. My name is Botley. I can see you've brought help. And you've got the Transquizzer. She knows we need it to save the world. Didn't my father teach you it's rude to tell secrets, Rotley? Well, I suppose he's told you his side of everything. <laughs> but what does he know? Today, when I was at school, the teacher handed us a surprise quiz. I already knew all the answers, and she knew I knew them. So, just to have some fun, I made up my own answer to that dumb old quiz. But instead of laughing like she was supposed to, she gave me a big fat zero. I felt faint and short of breath. No one's ever given me a zero before. Well, that's not quite true, Polly. I remember just two weeks ago. Be quiet, Plotly. This is my story. Anyway, after getting my first zero ever, I got the most brilliant idea. Instead of settling for a bad grade, I change history to match my answers. So you sent 25 of your father's robots back in time to change history? How could you do that, Polly? Oh, that was the easy part, since Daddy just invented that handy-dandy time machine upstairs. Everyone should have one. I just marched those robots into the machine, pushed a few buttons, and voila! Unfortunately, there's still one more question. The extra credit question. And it's super hard. That's why I've been looking for you, Notley. That's Botley. And I want nothing to do with your plan, Polly. Just bring those robots back. Don't you see? You could destroy us all. You could destroy us all. Please, Botley, if you're so scared, why don't you just bring them back yourself? You've got my transquizzer. Now all you need are the questions on my history quiz. To make it so easy even you can figure it out, I'll leave the disc with the first part of the test on the first floor. That's five questions total. Just plug that disc into the transquizzer. Then, figuring out where I sent the robots should be simple. But I'm warning you, if I don't get them all back soon, I'm sending you off to do the extra credit question. Oh, uh, by the way, you have to get in the house first. And I've changed the locks. Good luck! Oh, that's just great. How are we gonna get into the mountain? You see, the professor's lock system only opens when you reproduce the chimes you hear. Ring the doorbell to start the chimes. That will start the unlocking mechanism. Just listen closely and repeat what you've heard by clicking on the correct door panels. Way to go! You're doing great. Good job, you opened the lock. Ouch, not quite. Only one more lock to go. That's it, you open the door. Now be quiet. 
and follow me. First, though, let me put this in a safe place. On second thought, maybe it's safer with you. It's the utility belt that Professor Spark designed for me, and it's quite an achievement. Over there's a button that will take you out of any room in the mountain. The indicator next to it tells you how much energy is left to power the mountain. Now, if you ever need assistance, push on this button, and I'll do what I can to help. In the middle of the belt is the inventory. That's where we can store things we find in the mountain. The Transquizzer, for instance. Professor Spark has set up a lot of games inside the mountain for Polly, me, and the other robots. If you click on this button, you can make some of them harder or easier to play. Finally, this score keeps track of how many invention points we earn. By opening the door, you've already earned a few points. Now, our destiny. This is the professor's home and laboratory. It's an entirely self-sufficient environment. We don't have to leave the mountain for anything. The professor even included recreational and cultural activities, so he and Polly wouldn't get bored. I suppose I should give you the two-cent tour of the place. Over there is the kitchen, where we feature the very finest robot cuisine. Back there is the art gallery. Through that door is the music hall. When Polly takes her weekly music lesson there, the whole place clears out. Behind that door are stairs leading to the professor's jumbo electro generator. If necessary, we might have to go down there to power up. Finally, that stairway leads to the upper floors, filled with the professor's inventions. His most amazing invention, the time machine, is at the very top. Maybe later we'll have time to explore, but now we have to stop Polly from making the world too weird. To do that, we need to find that quiz disc. Hey, there it is. Pull out the transquizzer by clicking on the inventory button on the utility belt. All right, it looks like the disc should be inserted in the slot near the top of the transquizzer. Good morning, Polly. I hope you've studied for the quiz today. You may have a lot of natural ability, but even geniuses need to study. That's Polly's teacher, Ms. Winkle. At that school on the hill, everything's state-of-the-art. All the quizzes are personalized, programmed, and videotaped by the teacher. Pretty cool, huh? Now, today's quiz is all about inventions and discoveries. Something you should know plenty about, Polly. Oh, but no fair asking your father for help. <laughs> See? Everyone's impressed by the professor. There are 25 questions total, Polly. Five on each of the five discs I've passed out to you and the rest of the class. That's five different levels. So, sit up straight, put on your thinking cap, and select your first question. Okay, what we should do first is select one of the quiz questions. Just click on any one of the five buttons near the bottom of the transquizzer. Since we've got to bring all the robots back, the order doesn't really matter. Click on the yellow start button if you want to hear this question. People once thought the Earth was the center of the universe and everything revolved around it. That's because when they looked up in the sky, the sun and the stars all appeared to be moving around the Earth. A nice idea, but appearances can be deceiving. Today we know that the Earth revolves around what? Miss Winkle, as everybody knows, I am the center of the universe. <laughs> Yes, Polly, you're exactly right. The whole world revolves around you. Heavens, Polly is just too much to bear. She used to think she was the center of the universe. Now she really is. We need to go back in time and straighten this mess out, or life as we know it will change drastically. Click on the inventory button to put away the transquizzer. Polly, you know I've been programmed to clean up your messes, and that includes bringing back my robot pals. I know you won't tell me where they are, but how about a little hint? Well, it just so happens, Sotly, that I realized long ago that you would try to mess up my work, so I covered my tracks by hiding clues all over the mountain. Four clues total. You and your friend will have to find and collect them all. And even if you can find them all, which I highly doubt you can, you will still have to go to Daddy's time machine and figure out where I sent the robot if you expect to beat me. Oh, by the way, you know how Daddy feels about amateurs going into the time machine room. It's a very sensitive piece of equipment, you know. 
So before a hunk of rusty bolts like you can get inside, you'll have to earn a bunch of invention points. A thousand of them should just about do it for starters. Well, Polly, okay. It looks like we have no choice but to play by your rules, as unfair as they are. Just tell us what we need to find for this mission. Relax, Scuttly. It won't be so bad. I sent Russian robot Cosmobot to put me in the center of the universe. You can get him back if you find these four clues. A pig, a sundial, a postage stamp, and a dollar bill. But why mess up a good thing? Cosmobot and I never used to get along, but now we're pals. I can't believe Polly reprogrammed him for her selfish purposes. We have to find those clues and get Cosmobot back. Finding the clues should be a little less hopeless with my powerful censoring device. Professor Spark hooked me up this way so I could better keep an eye on Polly. I can monitor every nook and cranny of the mountain. Keep still while I sense around for clues. Hey, we're in luck. I'm sensing a mission clue in the music hall. There's another mission clue in the painting gallery. This is Professor Sparks' art gallery. It's sort of an art museum and an art studio combined. That odd-looking machine over there is his virtual collection, where the professor keeps a display of some of the most famous works of art in the world. You can also go into the painting gallery in the back to create your own masterpiece. Don't forget to bring your imagination. If you're going to visit the gallery, you let me know if you find any of Polly's things hidden in there. If I've told her once, I've told her a thousand times, don't mess up the collection. Of course, she doesn't listen to me. Why, once I found a Romanesque urn next to a Baroque. That's Mrs. Beasley. She's the resident art expert. Some say she's as old as some of the Greco-Roman statues in here. I heard that, you hotshot silicon chipsters. So smart and so fast and so what? I've got more sense in my vacuum tubes than a lot of you. Well, if we have any questions about the art, we'll be sure to ask you. I think Polly has hidden one of the clues in the painting gallery. Click on the gallery way behind me to look into this. Polly could have hidden stuff in the painting gallery in the back. It's there where you can create your own works of art. This room looks like an ordinary painting gallery, but Polly's father created it so anyone can make their own art. Heidi ho Snotly. I hid one of the mission clues here, and if you want it, either you or your friend will have to paint me a pretty picture. Of course, I get to tell you exactly what to paint. And it better be good. I've always wanted a painting that showed something like this. The goldfish underwater. I set my goldfish free in the ocean. He wouldn't swim away. He just went up and down like he was waiting for me. Click on any of the empty frames to begin painting. Click on the sheet of paper on the floor to read Polly's story. So the deal here is that Polly wants us to illustrate her strange story. I don't have much of an artistic flair. It's just not in my programming. So it looks like it's up to you. Luckily, Professor Spark made it so anyone can paint like one of the great masters. To your left are all the tools you'll need, and at the bottom are lots of cool colors. If you need to be reminded of what Polly's demanding, click on the card on the lower left corner of the frame. When you go back to the gallery, you'll see your work already hanging on the wall. Then we'll find out if Polly likes it.
but don't let her opinion matter to you. I don't know much about the artistic process, but my inner transistors tell me that selecting the background first is the best way to illustrate Polly's story. an artist. Let's add the clue to the inventory and move forward. Bingo! I've sensed a mission clue in the music hall. This is the door to the professor's concert hall, which he usually keeps locked so none of the less musical robots around here pound too hard on the piano. But the door doesn't open with a key. Instead, it uses a password. You have to figure out the password by unscrambling the four words on the left side of the door. I'm not so good with spelling, but luckily we've got some help. Hey, Beethoven! Huh? Hello? Who's there? Oh, Bartley, it's just you. You should have called my name instead of just scuffling around out there. Uh, sure. Okay. Listen, Polly's up to no good again, and we're trying to stop her. We're having trouble with this lock. Can you help us? Huh? Speak up. Don't mumble. Can you help us? Now, Bartley, if I just gave you the answers, Polly would reboot me in a heartbeat. But if you're really having trouble figuring out one of the words, click on the button next to it, and I'll see what I can do. Good luck. Okay. What you must do is unscramble the letters on the left side of the door to create four words. You can do that by clicking on any letter, then clicking on the space where you want it to go. Each time you unscramble a word, you'll be rewarded with at least one letter in the password, which appears on the right side of the door. When you unscramble those letters, you figured out the password and the door should open. Easy. Rhymes with Spain. Rain! You've got a real talent for this. If it weren't for this, sailboats couldn't move. Wind! Terrific! We're almost in. You do this to your soup before you eat it. Heat! Great job! You're better at this than I am. Wet snow. Sleet. You figured out all four words. Now, can you unscramble the password? That is correct. The password is weather. Let's go. This is the Mountains Music Hall. This is where rehearsals are held by our award-winning all-robot chorus, headed by Maestro Trombot. Of course, thanks to Polly, half the members of the chorus are lost in time right now. Ah, oh, to hear their sweet, dulcet tones just one more time. Maestro? Hey, Maestro! Shh, Bartley. You'll misalign my perfect pitch sensors. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. There we go. Sorry, Maestro, but Polly's put us all in a bit of a jam, and the future of civilization is at stake. 
Mamma mia, if she would only practice her arias, she wouldn't have the time or the inclination to destroy the world. Music has such a civilizing influence, although her voice, uh, let's just say it's not music to my ears. I heard that, maestro. You just don't appreciate my instrument. Do 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 do. Well, Polly, you do have a quality. I've got scads and scads of quality. But what Notley here wants is the mission clue I hid here. In order to get it, though, he'll have to play me a song. Not just any song, though. I want to hear this song. And please play it right, Dingbot. My delicate ears can't handle even one sour note. You mess up, and you get nothing. Nada. Zilch. Nuts. You know, if you like, you can play the organ with the top row of number keys on your keyboard. Click on the music tablet to play that tune. How did she... Uh, uh, it seems that you have your work cut out for you, dear Botley. You see, the music is all mixed up. If you want to hear how it's supposed to sound, click on me and I'll play it for you. Then you should have little trouble rearranging those musical phrases until they're in the right order. Click on the button next to the phrase to hear the music stored on it. Then click on the phrase to move it to another slot. If you click on the play button, you can play the entire piece as it's arranged on the music tablet. You can even change the instrument it's played with by selecting one of the instruments on this panel. This song is called Yankee Doodle. In the old country, Italy, you know, a macaroni is the type of feather people used to wear in their hats. I bet you never knew that. Now pick up the mission clue and let's move on. Okay, there aren't any mission clues on this floor. Let's go searching on another floor. You'll see that as we go up higher in the mountain, the professor's inventions get more secret and bizarre. Here we have the professor's delicate biosphere. And over there, we have the professor's shrinkomatic. An easy way to shed a few robot pounds. That tram there will take us even further up into the mountain and to some of the professor's other inventions, including his famous time machine. If you want to go back to the first floor, click on these stairs. Quiet now. I'm going to sense out this area. Okay, all sensors indicate that Polly hid a mission clue in the professor's biosphere. There's also a mission clue in the shrinking machine room. Okay, all sensors indicate that Polly hid a mission clue in the professor's biosphere. Ah, and there's another clue in the shrinking machine room. 
<sighs> See that glass dome? That's Professor Sparks' biosphere. In it, he can grow anything he wants from any part of the world. It's kind of like a vegetable zoo. And to protect the biosphere from outside contamination, the professor has set up a remote control way of working inside it. See over there? Those are explorers the professor designed to fly into the biosphere. And on that monitor is where you can watch the explorer as you maneuver it anywhere you want. Inside, there are five different environments to check out. A desert, a rainforest, a mountain range, a grassland, and even an ocean. Each one contains plants and animals you might find in those places. Oh, Muckley, over here. Daddy doesn't deserve all the credit. I planted some things in the biosphere, too. Sure, Polly. Whatever you say. I did. You don't have to believe me, but I just thought you might be interested in knowing that I planted a mission clue in there. You can't get your poor robot friend back without it. Don't expect me to tell you where I hid it, though. That would be too easy. Polly, the biosphere is huge. You're expecting us to find a needle in the haystack, so to speak. Relax, Nutley. I know Daddy didn't exactly overload you with smarts. I guess I can even the playing field and give you some hints along the way. And here's your first hint. Get one of those explorers launched. Even you should be able to understand that. Boy, someday. Well, let's launch one of these babies and see what Polly's got in store for us inside that biosphere. Click on the launch button on the console to send the explorer inside. Okay, now we can navigate the explorer around the biosphere by watching it on this monitor. Click on the monitor for a closer look. It seems like the Explorer is underground. I guess what we need to do is fly up into the biosphere. That should be right above us. To fly the Explorer, use the arrow keys on your keyboard. Press the up arrow to blast the Explorer forward, and press the left and right arrows to rotate it. Take a crack at this mind bender. Which house is made of dry mud? An igloo, a greenhouse, or an adobe hut? Yeah, yeah, so you got it right. This brain tickler is sure to leave you high and dry. What do you call a dry riverbed? A marsh? An arroyo? A waterfall? Just a lucky guess. Here's a tough question that's bound to hold you back. 
What do you call an area with fresh water and plant life? An oasis, a sand dune, or an iceberg? That was way too easy. These questions are easy, but then again, everything's easy for me. Which animal flies highest in the air? A grasshopper, a vulture, or a vampire bat? That was way too easy. Don't bang your head against the wall trying to figure this one out. Which bird pecks a hole in the side of large plants and trees to build its nest? A hummingbird, a pelican, a woodpecker. I knew you'd get that one. Good job. We're above ground. The professor reproduced five different environments here. You have to find the one where Polly hid her clue. Press the space bar to launch a probe. It'll give you an eyewitness view of what's down there. Then match what you find with Polly's hints. When you think you figured out the right environment, land the explorer in the designated landing pad. Each environment has one. Found a house made with thick walls of dry mud to keep desert-dwelling humans cool in hot weather. This is an adobe hut. Found. An area in the desert with an underground supply of fresh water and lush plant life. This macro recorder indicates a bird that pecks a hole in the side of a saguaro cactus to build its nest. Other birds sometimes move into its nest. This is a woodpecker. Hey, nice landing. Click on a key on the console to open the box. That was nice work. Okay, all sensors indicate that Polly hit a mission clue in the shrinking machine room. This is Professor Sparks' masterpiece. Well, one of them anyway. He calls it the uh, something or other. We call it the Shrinkomatic. It can reduce anything or anyone to the size of a medium-large molecule with the help of my good friend, Egbert. Greetings, human. Do you know what a molecule is? Well, it's one of the tiniest things around. Everything's made of them, one way or another, and it's impossible to see them with the naked eye. As you can see, Egbert is full of facts. He manages all the specimens in this place, and he's deeply attached to them. Anything you need to know about any of them, he can tell you. Oh, yes. So if you want to know about any of my wonderful specimens, just pick up this analyzer and click on it. But please, don't hurt the specimens. <sighs> well, that'll come in handy when you go searching for the mission clue, because I miniaturized it and hid it inside one of those specimens. Which specimen, Polly? Give us a hint. Okay, Potley, okay. Anything to stop your whining. Egbert's so cheap, he uses this specimen for a carpet. Carpet has no place in a laboratory. It's simply not sterile. So we have to figure out which specimen Polly is talking about. That's where Egbert will come in handy. Use his analyzer to get information on any of the specimens and to help you determine which is the right one. When you think you know the right specimen, hand the analyzer back to Egbert. You can then move the specimen over to the shrinkomatic. Once it's there, Egbert can shrink me to the size of a molecule. Then I can dive into the specimen and find what we're looking for. Earthworm. Earthworms live underground and eat soil. They range in size from one mold. Mold like mushrooms is a fun moss. Moss is a short green plant that grows everywhere. Moss grows on tree trunks, rocks, and moist ground. 
Moss is super soft and feels like a carpet when you walk on it. Truffle. A truffle is a... Do you think that's the right specimen? If so, just click on the microscope on the floor. Ready, Botley? Hold on tight. It is some ride, I'm told. It's a far better thing, Arthur! If you chose the right specimen, the object Polly hid should be somewhere inside that giant molecular thingamabob up there. You just have to bat me into that stuff until it's revealed. Click on the mouse button to launch me into inner space, then use the mouse to move the magnet. I can't stay small forever, though, so try to get through the molecules before I return to my regular size. I won't last more than ten rounds in here, so you have to work quick. Click on the mouse to launch me. We found it! Just pick up the clue and add it to the inventory. We've collected all the mission clues, but we're a little short in the invention point department. We need 1,000 total. We could always go back to the first floor, play a game, and scoop up some more invention points. That was the last of Polly's mission clues. But we'll never be able to work the time machine if we don't... Feel like browsing through the virtual collection? Just click on the machine. Or go to the gallery in the back if you feel like creating your own work. Just make sure you leave everything the way you... What's the matter? Your sensors need tuning? There's no clue in here. But if you insist on browsing the collection, I did hide some invention points in one of the works. We need a clue. Quick, Snotly. What U.S. state is famous for its peaches? Peaches from Georgia are famous all around the world. And Georgia happens to be the first name of an artist whose portrait I love. <laughs> <laughs>
Let's go. This is a device that Professor Spark invented to display all the great works of art he knows and loves without actually having to fork over the big bucks to buy them himself. It's all done with computers. <laughs> what else? Luckily, that makes it easier to find the invention points that Polly hid here. First, you need to select the work of art that matches Polly's hint. See that drum on the right side of the machine? That displays tiny pictures of all the works in the collection. If you click on any of the pictures, Mrs. Beasley will tell you a little bit about it and help you decide if it's the work you want to see. After Mrs. Beasley is finished, you can click on it again to see the work on the professor's digital display. Fortunately, Mrs. Beasley has also neatly arranged all the works of art into categories. She's really kind of a neat freak. If the work you want isn't on the display, pull this lever to check out a different category. Mrs. Beasley, can you remind my friend about which of the professor's works of art we're looking for? You're looking for a portrait of an artist named Georgia. So you should begin by selecting the correct category, but be careful which work you send to the digital display, because each time you do, it will use up some of the energy that's vital to running things around here. Of course, if we get low, we can always run down to the electric generator to juice up. This landscape painting of a stormy sea is really a seascape, not a land. This artist grew up studying the river valley where he grew up. His realistic landscape painting... This still life with apples was painted by Cezanne. This is a Dutch still life. 300 years. This is a still life of a plate of fish. Nothing strange there. But isn't it odd how the plate seems to float in the air? This mosaic of Alexander the Great was made by... This is an example of a typical American quilt. Quilts were often made by groups of women in quilting bees. This piece of decorated pottery is called porcelain. Porcelain was first in... This is a portrait of the artist Georgia O'Keeffe. Her paintings are beautiful, and so is this photograph. Over time, photographs have become the most popular way of capturing a person's portrait. This portrait is a photograph of one of America's most important artists, Georgia O'Keeffe, standing in front of one of her beautiful paintings. Did you notice the regal profile of her face? Georgia O'Keeffe moved to New Mexico and began painting mysterious images of the desert landscape around her. Hey, that was a lucky guess. And according to Polly's Book of Rules, which was written by yours truly, lucky guesses don't count. So there. No, you'll have to work a lot harder than that to win. That's not fair, Polly. If that's the right work of art, you can't just change the rules like that. You can't change the rules like that. Well, guess what, Blotly? It's my house and my missions, and you play how I say. Now I say, solve this. Uh-oh. It's a puzzle Polly thinks only she's smart enough to finish. But I think you can do it, too. You just have to line up the tiles so that all their sides match. Click on any puzzle piece to lift it off the display. Then click on any other piece and they'll change places. All the pieces aren't right side up though, so sometimes you'll have to rotate them. You can do that by hitting the rotate button right there at the bottom of the display. While you're playing, Mrs. Beasley will tell you stuff about what you're looking at. She knows everything there is to know about the works of art Polly used to create this puzzle. Oh, this is a beautiful puzzle filled with things made by Native Americans. Some of my favorite pieces are here.
Nice going. Terrific. Now put it into your... In We've got everything we need to complete this mission. And since time is of the utmost importance, let's get to the time machine immediately. We should go to the time machine to complete this mission. Let's take the tram to the top. Yes, we're at the very top of the mountain. Just knowing what's up here gives me chills. Still, I'd go anywhere and face any danger to save my fellow robots. Over there, we have the professor's observatory. Once, a while ago, he caught Polly spying on the neighbors with the telescope. Boy, did she get a nice long time out. In that room is a little obstacle course, sort of a robot boot camp. The professor uses it to test out his new robots. Of course, I passed with flying colors when I was tested, but sometimes he comes across a robot with a few bugs that need to be worked out. If you want to go back downstairs, just click on the tram. Oh, and over there, behind those forbidding stone doors, that's where the professor stores the time machine. There's no way to open it, though, until we have all of Polly's mission clues and, of course, enough invention points. We've got everything we need. Take a deep breath and click on the time machine door back there. Wow. Huh, excuse me if I sound sort of odd, but I wasn't sure we'd make it to the time machine mission control. It's impressive, huh? This is Professor Spark's most important work to date, the time machine extraordinaire. The professor created it so he could witness the invention of anything you can think of. Just go back in time and observe. He would never meddle, not like Polly. When he finds out what she's been up to, I wouldn't be surprised if she's in for some serious time out. Now we need to figure out where we have to go in history to complete this mission. That odd-looking machine will help with that task. It's called the Wheel of Invention, and by using Polly's mission clues, we can figure out which inventor we need to find. The professor tried to ensure that not just anybody could use the time machine. You need to know something about history, science, art, a little bit of everything, really. So click on the wheel and let's get going. We finally made it. This is where we bring everything together and figure out how to find the robot that Polly sent back in time. This is the professor's wheel of invention. It's an obstacle to the time machine. You see, some of the robots kept wanting to travel back in time to taunt the early computers, but you can't have that. So the professor devised a little quiz that's too difficult for the robots. But hopefully it's not too difficult for you. Oh, brother. Polly's reprogrammed the wheel so it's no longer just a quiz. It's a quiz show! It seems the show's called Pollywood Squares. You're the first contestant. This is how you play. Answer three questions for each of the clues you collected. You'll find out what, when, where, and who. All the information you need to create a profile of your mission. Once the game begins, you gotta work fast and try to answer each question on the first try. That way you'll win the time key faster and win the most points. Ready, set, okay, let's begin. Just click the on button to start. Ladies and gentlemen, kids and robots of all ages, it's time to play Pollywood Squares with your telegenic host, me, Monty Monitor. Answer all the questions correctly, and you'll be sent back in time, all expenses paid, to rescue poor Cosmobot. Your first clue is a pork chop. The pork chop will show you what your mission is all about. I love pork chops, and I'm not the only one. Pork chops can be found in cuisines all around the world. Pork chops come from which farm animals? That's right. Pork chops come from pigs. So does ham and bacon. It's all pork and it comes from pigs. 
Pigs are the only animals besides humans whose skin can get what painful condition? You're right! Hey! Pigs get sunburns just like people. Sunburns are caused by overexposure to the powerful rays of the sun. Our sun is actually a star. It's the center of a group of heavenly bodies known as what? You did it! Yay! Another word for sun is solar. That's why they call it the solar system. Uh-huh. So it seems that Polly sent Cosmobot back to the time in history when the solar system was discovered. But where was that? Your second clue is a postage stamp, and it will tell you where in the world your mission will take you. Postage stamps are a way to pay for sending letters and packages. Before postage stamps were invented, the person who received a letter had to pay for it, not the person who sent it. The postage stamp was first invented by an Englishman named Roland Hill. What country did the English inventor of the postage stamp come from? That's right, oh, jolly good. English people come from England, and England is part of the United Kingdom of Great Britain. Now, let's see how good you are at geography. Great Britain is located on which continent? Right, oh, Great Britain is in Europe, the second smallest continent on Earth. What country is located in the very center of the continent of Europe? France is in Western Europe. Correct, yes. Poland is a large country in the center of Europe. Polish people make delicious pork sausages and dance to a unique style of music called polka. Poland's also the place where the solar system was first discovered. Thanks, Monty. We now know that the solar system was discovered in Poland. What we don't know is when it was discovered and by whom. The third clue is a dollar bill. It will tell you when in history the solar system was discovered. If you had a million dollar bills, you'd be a millionaire. The first kid ever to earn a million dollars was a famous movie star named Shirley Temple. The dollar gets its name from a coin once used in a European country, known for its mountains, castles, beer, and frankfurters. Which country was that? Wunderbar! In Germany, the coin they called the dollar was made out of a precious metal. Precious metals are metals that are not commonly found on Earth. Which of the following metals is a precious metal? That's right! Silver is a valuable precious metal that is often used for making coins. Silver was first used to make the German dollar 500 years ago. Which is the earliest year you could have used a German dollar to buy a Frankfurter? That's right! In 1531, the silver coin called the dollar could have bought you plenty of German Frankfurters. 1531 also happens to be the year when the solar system was discovered. Almost there. All we need to find out is the person in Poland who discovered the solar system in 1531. This is your fourth and final clue. The sundial will tell you who first discovered the solar system. A sundial tells the time as a shadow moves across a surface marked with the hours of the day. The Egyptians invented the sundial 5,000 years ago, and it was one of the earliest ways of measuring time. A sundial works due to the movement of what heavenly body? You are correct. <laughs> Even though the sun creates the shadow that moves across a sundial, it's really the Earth that's moving, not the sun. While the Earth spins, it also moves around the sun. What is the Earth's movement around the sun called? 
That's right! <laughs> the Earth revolves around the sun. It takes one year to make one revolution. Who discovered that the Earth revolves around the sun? Right you are! Copernicus was the Polish astronomer who discovered the solar system in 1531. Before his discovery, people thought that everything revolved around the Earth. Okie dokie, we got all the information we need. Now, on to the time machine. side of this thing. Pretty cool, huh? The professor made it clear this time machine was off limits to anyone but him. But with Polly about to send the world out of control, I think the professor would understand. Looks pretty complicated, huh? But let's see if we can figure out how this baby works. That looks like our window into the past. Look, all the information you found at the wheel is now neatly in place up there. I guess the time key did that. This lever looks important. Click on me if you think I should pull it. Maybe it'll start things up. Next stop, Poland, to visit the great scientist Copernicus. He's about to discover that the sun is the center of the solar system. But there's Copernicus on the brink of making his great discovery. But look, Polly has reprogrammed the Russian robot Cosmobot to paint her picture on the model of the sun. Yet, Cosmobot, yet! Thanks to Cosmobot, Copernicus has decided that the Earth revolves around Polly. And we thought she had a swelled head before. Hit the recall button! It's our only chance! Wow, we did it! Cosmobot's back home and the cosmos is back in order. Now back to the future. Some landing! Press the back button on the utility belt to leave the time machine. We need to put this robot to rest. This is where the professor stores all his time-traveling robots. I call it the Robot Roost. Believe you me, these guys have been around the block a few times. The problem is, we have to get them all back from the different places and times that Polly sent them. Right now, though, it's one down and 24 to go. You gotta start somewhere. Just let me store this robot for safekeeping. A long rest is sorely needed. Polly sent plenty more back in time, so let's start another mission. Well, good for you, Snotly. You rescued another one of your little friends. How sweet. But there are more where that one came from. I just hope you can rescue them in time. All right, we still got places to go and robots to rescue. Click on the inventory to start a mission. All right, we still got places to go and robots. We really should start a mission. <laughs> 